Well, this is Mrs. Murdoch, and I'm going to talk mainly about photosynthesis right now, but I wanted to start by comparing photosynthesis to the process of respiration. So the first thing I want to kind of remind you of is that the kind of organisms that do these two different processes. So if I was going to put that beneath here, beneath my T um, chart of photosynthesis, I would say all things that can do photosynthesis would be termed autotrophs. Autotrophs would include things like plants, would also include single-celled algae like what I have in my tank over there, or even bacteria. There are very rare bacteria called cyanobacteria that can do photosynthesis. In fact, that was the very first photosynthesis performed on Earth two billion years ago that first put oxygen into the air were done by these very special bacteria. But most of the time when we think of autotrophs, we think about trees and plants and roses and things like that. Okay, so that's, that's easy enough. Respiration, you would immediately say, probably you would say heterotrophs. And you'd be correct, except that you have to complete the answer by saying all living organisms, all of them, right? All living organisms can do this. Heterotrophs and autotrophs must have some form of respiration. Respiration is actually a life function. In order to be considered alive, you have to have some way of taking a food molecule and getting ATP out of it. Even if you're only doing fermentation and getting two, two ATP per glucose, you're still doing respiration. Even, you're a, even if you're a simple bacteria, you're doing that. So given that, let's make sure we understand what this looks like at the cellular level. Could somebody close that door over there? Thank you. Okay. All right. So if you look at a typical plant cell, okay, and in that plant cell you have all kinds of different organisms. Let's say that this is a eukaryotic plant cell. In that plant cell, obviously you know, especially if you're in the leaf and you're in the mesophyll tissue of the leaf, you have chloroplasts in there, which are these green things, right? Chloroplasts are the green things that do the photosynthesizing. But next door to them, you will have mitochondria, the sort of peanut-shaped things that also do the respiration. So don't forget that plant cells, although they are very special and can do this photosynthesis process, right next door are the mitochondria that we already learned about that do that amazing aerobic respiration process that makes so much of the ATP that we learned about. So the chloroplasts are the things taking the carbon dioxide out of the air and converting them into glucose, right? They're doing that and they're also making oxygen gas which, which we need to do aerobic respiration. And right next door, the mitochondria are taking those in and making carbon dioxide from them, which might go out to the air, but it could also go back into the chloroplasts and be remade into glucose. Right? It's also making most of the ATP, the excess ATP, that the plant cell needs for cell work. The difference is, instead of the plant cell having to ingest food molecules from outside the way animals do, the plant cell makes its own food, right? Which literally can then be used by its own mitochondria to make the ATP that its cells need. Okay. So now let's go over to the animal cell and kind of do a same picture. Now the animal cell doesn't have chloroplasts. It can't make its own food, but it has those same mitochondria we talked about and that we've learned about so much with the aerobic respiration, where is it getting its glucose? It's eating glucose made by plants and stored by plants in their extra parts, right? In potatoes, tomatoes, carrots, you know, anything that an animal cell can eat or ingest, it's getting from outside, goes in, goes through glycolysis. That's where it gets its ATP from to do its cell work. And it's exuding carbon dioxide as, as a waste product, which then can be used by the plant cell. So this is a very cyclic thing. Photosynthesis and respiration are connected. They are connected. And if you think about all the organisms on the planet, thank you. If you think about all the organisms on the planet, all the producers, there's a tremendous amount of biomass of living producers, autotrophs on the planet that are making a ton 
of food, a ton of oxygen, right? Extra oxygen and extra food that plants don't even use that is then available for all of the animal cells or the, all the other types of eukaryotic heterotrophs that are in need of that food, right? But it's all cyclical. You have to have one and the other for it all to work. Okay, so now given that, now let's remember, maybe you can remember this. Um, the overall reactions for photosynthesis and respiration, remember, we have photosynthesis, you're taking raw inorganic materials, carbon dioxide and water, right? And through a long series of reactions, you're making glucose and oxygen, right? There. So there's your, there's your overall reaction for photosynthesis. If you were going to go over here and write the exact same reaction for respiration, you would find what? You would find the exact reverse. Again, the connectedness of these two giant processes. The products of one become the reactants of the other. So I take glucose over here, right? And it becomes a reactant along with oxygen for the respiration reactions, which yield carbon dioxide and water. So again, just another reminder of how they're connected. What I want to do now is I want to go to a video that talks about and defines them, defines the specific process of photosynthesis. And I'm going to do that as a separate video. So now you have a connection between photosynthesis and respiration. Um, I'm going to end this video here and then start another video just on photosynthesis by itself.